You know what part I like? You should have brought back in one more time. Yeah. To me, to Mara. <laughs> All that shit, man. Throughout the Paris. The, the, that, that, you know what I mean? It's going down, man. That was that motherfucking, that was the part right there. This shit going down, man. But listen, man. Like, I don't think y'all understand what's going on. But right now, you're now tuned into me, 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 Rich, man, is going down, man. I'm talking about he out here feeding the streets, too, in real time. Actually feeding people in the streets, like going in the supermarkets, going in the routes and blessing people. No, 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 man. Miss Johnson, I got that tag. Mm -hmm. Miss Brown, I got that tag. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about going from city to city, just to take care of people, actually really feeding the streets. You know, in 2017 is when I first, I first met Rowdy, man. You know, he was in Philadelphia. He was, it was all love, great energy and all that stuff, mm -hmm. man. And then he was Phoenix Streets, but now he on a whole nother level. You know, this was just when part one was out. Mm -hmm. Phoenix Streets one. This was before 2018, then he came with two. But now, but now he just in a whole nother, a whole nother planet, man. How does it feel to win coming from the Yajeks? You ain't come from the projects. You came from a different place. This shit is a little different. It's a little more trickier where mm -hmm. you came from. How do it feel to be where you at now? And did you really believe that you was even going to make it on this level? Yeah, I, I can't say uh, level, but for sure, I, I we believe, you know what I'm saying? I feel like the belief is what got us here, like just being consistent and staying true to being consistent. You know? mm -hmm. It's the belief in it, yeah. Yeah, you know, I see the growth. There's a lot of growth, but I see when I first met you, you had Bird with you. Now you still got Bird with you. How is important is your team and the people that you have around with for you? For sure, that's, that's everything, you know what I'm saying? Because they keep your headspace right, you know, outside of the music or just – the business that go on, you know what I'm saying? They just, they keep you in that right space and it's always good to just see everybody grow. You feel me? Like that's, that's the, that's the goal in this shit to just see everybody in their own spaces growing and doing what they want to do. You feel me? Like Bird got other artists, keep us still in the, in the office, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Running this game. So it's just like, it's good to see niggas you came up with doing, doing what they want to do. Now when you say, what was, was crazy is that you started with Feed the Streets and now you really, you know, all these years of success, you could have just dipped. And you ain't had to go back and feed the streets and feed people within the inner cities of America and the ghetto. What made you What made you do that? I mean, I feel like feed, feeding the streets and, and on a, on a, on a, like a, a realistic level, like just handing out food and doing stuff like that. Like we do that. We've been, I've been doing that before I was famous. You know what I'm saying? My mom, she used to give out food to like, you know, homeless people around the house and just I feel like that's where I got the concept from you get what I'm saying like just <clears throat> feeding people or, or just a given spirit like get that from my mom but um, going back to this was just more so for the fans like just giving them kind of vulnerable more vulnerable just me not trying to be too commercial not trying to be you feel me not trying to hit no bill with none of that it was just more for my fans like alright let me go back and just feed the fans like you get what I'm saying? Go back to that. I commend you because, you know, some motherfuckers, you know, walk up in one Walmart and, you know, they call it a day. Listen to you everywhere like broken glass. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, man, you fucking yeah. that beef bacon up. I'm talking about I'm like, Look up, you like this nigga, a couple hundred bands in the whole fucking with like, you go how how far is you gonna feed the streets? <laughs> you gonna look up, you gonna be three point five billion. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so I commend you, you know what I mean, I for taking your that. own money and you know what I'm saying, giving back. Because at the end of the day, a lot of times in life, man, the small things that be small to us, that should be humongous to somebody else. Right, man. right. Just being able to be in your presence and walk up on you and, and receive whatever it is that you're giving out, that should be motivation, man. And I'm pretty sure there's some people out here that motivated you. We was talking out in the kitchen and you told me, man, Meek put the chain on me at, at, at the powerhouse, yeah. your first powerhouse, and that shit was motivation to you. You right, was like, right, man, right. fuck that. I got to go get me mines. And you said that's the reason why I got the double R. So, you know... You motivating motherfuckers without even knowing. Right. The kindness of your heart to just want to give back, you know, just want to see somebody who that's gone without to have something, maybe if it's even for that day or for, you know, you motivating, man. Right, no, so, I appreciate you know, I want to give you your flowers for, so. for being young and still being in, in tune with who you are and, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, young niggas lose their mind to get that fucking money. Right. 
He be running around here on Percocets, Adderall, Zandy, Syrup. Percocets, Adderall, Zandy, Syrup. First of all, Adderall, some new shit. Y'all niggas take drugs. Y'all just should have take drugs. Adderall, what the fuck does that do? It make you concentrate. Yeah, that was Wait, for the college kids. Nigga, the weed make, made us look, look. Yeah, that she was, was for different. the college kids. You See, know, they was finishing essays on Adderall. Yeah, you know. So like, when did it come into the rap world? The nigga probably just popped one. It just happened, you know. <laughs> just popped one and kept it going. Look, That's how they do it. Look, <laughs> nigga, like I popped the Adderall. I did 22 songs that night. My whole <laughs> album. Damn. <laughs> See, it was different back in the day when Gil was rapping. Gil, you know, they used to throw eight balls in the weed and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that shit, his lifestyle was different. <laughs> like, he, didn't, he didn't have a blunt without an eight ball up in there. You know what I mean? He kept an eight ball close and by his weed, sprinkle it. Like E-40 sprinkled me, baby. He used to be sprinkling his weed and shit. <laughs> That was a different life. Y'all youngins got it good than them niggas back in the day. All the more, like they were just wilding hey, yo, out. Hey, hey Neff, don't you believe? No, I'm just saying, you know, it was different. But 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 you know what? I I, I pay attention to a lot of shit. And Gil will tell you, like I'm one of them dudes that I don't give a fuck what's coming out. I'll be in the crib two in the morning. Just hold on for a second, though. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now today we gonna do a little something different. New Amsterdam Vodka is introducing Wild Card. You hear me? Look at that. Eight ounce can, the first canned beverage that New Amsterdam Vodka has ever distributed. It's right here, Wild Card, and it's made with real vodka. We're not playing no games, okay? There's not no artificial shit going on. No, this is made with real vodka, and it come in three flavors. Original hard lemonade, classic hard punch, and this right here, lemon hard tea. Yeah, look at it. Eight ounces. Look at it. Real vodka. Look at it. Wild card. When you out and about, wherever you at at your local liquor store or wherever they sell New Amsterdam vodka, make sure you pick you up some. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Try all three flavors. Give all three flavors a try. Figure out which one you like the best. This right here is the lemon hard tea. I think I'm about to crack this open and see what it's about. All right. Yeah, now what was your raggedy And we also made New Amsterdam vodka. The number one vodka in Pennsylvania. Yes, we did. So we doing something right. But, uh, you know. Not number two, nigga. Number one. Number I, one. I pay attention to a lot of shit. Gil be like, man, Wallo, you don't miss shit. You be on anything. One thing that I, I, I must commend you about is this. Your resilience is unmatched. You come back out with a song like Twin. You, you out here, you doing your thing. But, you know, when Live Life Fast came out, you had people that, you know, a lot of people can't handle the comments. They can't handle people uh, not being able to deal with growth and next level shit. And it breaks down. Motherfuckers fold up like beach chairs. You dig what I'm saying? They'll fold up. They'll fold up like beach chairs. But you? No, not, 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 not. Not the boy. I think it was the Yard Jacks that built you for certain shit. You said, man, that shit ain't about none. This is me going out and I'm, and I'm expressing. To me, artistry of artists is, I, they're going to go to different levels in life. And they're going to try to. Take us with them. Take the fan with them. Sometimes everybody can't go because they're not mentally there or they might be in a different place, which is cool. But you said, this shit ain't going to bring me down. I'm going to keep going. And you wasn't worried about people not being a part of what you brung out or what you had going on because you was like, all right, it might be for them, I don't, but I'm going to keep going. And you kept going and now you're here. You got a new project and you're not playing. Where did that Where did that resilience come from you that just keep going? Come. Where did that come from? Uh, <clears throat> I feel like just like I said, from the start, you know what I'm saying? It was like niggas started with nothing. You feel me? So we got to a point where we damn near had everything at our fingertips. So it's like, you know, I I don't see myself kind of stopping because of a, a, you know, an album they may not necessarily accept as well. Or I don't see myself stopping for, you know, I don't know, for, 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 for people out there. It's, it's more so a thing. I'm just... In a competition with myself mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying Like where I don't see myself stop, Stopping because It's something I love It's not something that I'm like Doing to reap benefits from Or yeah. something I'm doing to You get what I'm saying it's just, it's just more so Something that I just I love to do So if they don't really Rock with certain things It's cool We gonna keep it Keep it pushing Keep it going And and just You feel me Keep 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 the same process Keep going Yeah you uh, Hold on You drop something else You getting fired nigga I just yeah. had to tell my cameraman yeah. that he back yeah, there yeah, dropping. Yeah, shit. we got you. We gonna re, we you gonna re, ice the shit out. We gonna remix you. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the thing is this: 
You won a Grammy. Mm. Talk right? heavy. But you ain't just won a Grammy. You won a Grammy with Nip. Rest in peace to Nip. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, little bro. Oh. Um, how did it feel being in contact, you know, having Nip as a brother? How was that relationship and how did it feel, you know? It was it was surreal. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was surreal because just coming from where I where I came from, I ain't necessarily really ever think I would even meet him. You feel me? Like <clears throat> even coming up, we <laughs> me and Burr were trying to put money together to like get a feature from him. Like in the <laughs> beginning, beginning like before, like I asked one of his little homies, like, how much how much he charge for a feature? He like 10 racks. Like at the time, like, damn. Like niggas can't, you feel me? Like yeah. we ain't we ain't got it. So it was just, you know, just meeting him and him just always lacing me, not even just in music, it was just more so on some life shit. I remember I asked him a lot of relationship questions or just shit that I wanted to know his perspective on and he always was open and honest with a nigga. You know what I'm saying? So that was something I could respect. Um it was just all surreal, like even just how his family embraced me, you know what I'm saying? His brother. His wife, his girl, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. His his kids. I I remember we was at, at the Grammy before we won the Grammy. And his daughter, she had got straight A's. And he was like, I brought her to the Grammy. She wanted to meet you. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And that's how I had ended up meeting his daughter because she liked the music and shit like that. But it was just always genuine. and You know what I'm saying? So it was, I don't know. It, it, it was surreal with, with him. And it, every day was a new a new thing. You feel me? Like pulling up, I always learned something new with him. I remember the first time Gil, Gil heard you. And Gil was like, yo, where the fuck is Young Boy from, man? I never forget, man. We was in a, we was in another uh location at the time. I said, man, he from he, and Gil didn't believe you was from LA. Yeah, no, I didn't. He was why? like, I'm telling <laughs> because, you. Because why? Because growing up when we grew up, LA had a certain sound. They had a certain accent. They had a certain, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. Nigga, you ain't hard. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you a mark, nigga. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, your sound was not saying that a, 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 a typical L.A. sound ain't universal, but it has to break through from out of his L.A. Yeah, element to become universal. Right. Your shit was just kind of like universal right out the gate. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was kind of like he from L.A., but you didn't. It, to me, you didn't have an accent. You didn't have the. It was just so I was like, you know, like kind of like, damn, that's what's up. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now these the motherfuckers is growing to the point where as though. You probably wasn't mostly inspired by L.A. artists. Right. You feel what I'm right. saying growing up? And growing up in Philly, these kids ain't inspired mostly by Philly artists. You know, you got the Meeks, of course. That, inspired, But it'd be a lot of Chicago and, and Florida. And right, right, right. So to have the different sound and coming from where you was coming from, it was like, okay, there's something different. Yeah. Yeah. Nipsey sound like a West Coast. Nigga. Yeah, yeah. You feel what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. You see, he look like a West Coast nigga when you see him. He got his socks up high. He got. <laughs> you feel what I'm right, saying? Right, right, he, right. And you just had a whole different element to you. And it was, it was, it was like, damn, that's what's up. You know what I mean? The game is really growing now to where as though, you know, these kids is able to do whatever they want and yeah. you know put whatever sound they want out there. Appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. That was a big. It was a big time for you. Yeah, I feel. I feel like. <clears throat> I feel like just coming from there and being around everybody, like seeing how everybody was and what they was rapping about and how they was. I just kind of just wanted to stick out. Like if I did music, I wanted to be different. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to rap. You feel me? Right. I may. I may tell the story of certain shit that we always accustomed to or we knew, but I just wanted to sound different, so it kind of just set me apart. You and you was telling it in your way. You know what I'm saying. Right. And that's a beautiful thing. But what I do want to tell a lot of the fans out there is, man, y'all got to stop being jumpers. And I'm not speaking on the behalf of him. I'm speaking on behalf of all the artists. You know, artists put their second and their third and their fourth albums out, and you hear fans still talking about it ain't better than the first album. Right. 
that is the rawest form of the artist you ever going to get. You're never going to get him again. That first fucking album. You're talking about an artist that nine and a half out of ten times was dead fucking broke. So once they make it, you're never going to get the rawest fucking form of that artist ever again because ever. he's not in that fucking lifestyle no more. So a lot of times the fans don't even want to grow with the artists. They want the artist to make the same fucking music he was making when he first came in the game. Oh, I'm not in the same fucking position. I grew in life. <laughs> I'm not rapping about shooting niggas no more. I ain't put the gun out on a nigga in three years. I like pulling this black card out at fucking Ocean Prime. What the fuck are you talking about? For real. Yeah. So For real. sometimes the, the fucking fans... You got to, because it's like a lot of fans be stuck in the time like five years ago. It's like, nigga, you didn't grow the fuck up. Oh, you, a lot of fans be telling on themselves, oh, you still did, but pop busted and disgusted, huh? That's why you still want me to rap about when I was fucking dead, pop. I'm not living like that no fucking more. So sometimes y'all got to grow with the artists, allow the artists to grow, understand and this nigga life has changed. He's supposed to be rapping about happier shit. He's supposed to be rapping about living life. He's supposed to be rapping about his kids now. Like, that's all I want to tell the fans out there, man, because y'all motherfuckers jump ship faster than a motherfucker. Y'all be talking about a nigga one week, then the next week, and he ain't shit. It's like, damn, what the fuck? That nigga is the hottest nigga in the world. Right. But if you don't got that, that, uh, that peace within yourself, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that shit'll fuck you up. You know what I mean? But it'll fuck you up. You gotta keep yeah. going now. Uh because hold on, let me just speak on this because uh, uh, one nigga that I see they trying to shit on is is the baby right now. Y'all keep putting out all these motherfucker publications about what he is doing, what he ain't doing, but he giving out free tickets to his concerts. It's, ooh, every show I see. It's lit. It's lit. They that nigga's that a superstar. What? We so, was at Draymond Green wedding. I did my little late at night while, while I'm singing. But, you know, just a little vibe, high fashion. I'm on my little chill vibe. That nigga came up. Huh, 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 huh. Yeah. Nigga, the whole shit started jumping. I'm like, crazy. this nigga's crazy. But he still, you know what I'm saying? Right. He's still on that. He's still on that. So they got to they gotta, they gotta know that. Right. But see, sure. put, put, a lot of times to these people, perception is reality. So they keep saying bootleg ass memes about how you fell off, how you ain't this, right. how you that, and motherfuckers out here start believing that shit instead of believing for they what the fuck they think. And and a lot of times, a lot of artists. I'm gonna say this to artists: y'all gotta be real careful about what y'all receptive to when it come to media outlets in these blogs. A lot of these motherfuckers be clickbait. A lot of them don't need to be culturally inclined, and a lot of them never was even fans of your music or even know your music or your body of work to even fucking speak on you. There's a lot of goofy shit going on out here. And a lot of them can't respect the journey you took to get right. where the fuck yeah. you at because they ain't had that same fucking journey. They ain't never win. You, 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 a motherfucker that's sitting in a motherfucking office writing a motherfucking... Writing, them off, writing this negative shit about you or sitting on these blogs writing this negative shit about you nine times out of ten, they didn't take the same journeys you had to take through life to get where you going. That's why they don't respect that shit. A lot of times, life was a smooth motherfucking roller coaster for them. You feel what I'm saying? They never had to worry about what the fuck they was going to eat at night. They never had to worry about if their bills was getting paid, if their lights was on, if they had cable TV or not. They had all the fucking amenities. That's why they feel comfortable sitting there talking about street niggas who was like zero 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 point one percent fucking chance that you gonna make it, but now you super rich. And a nigga who did eleven years in college, mad as who shit got at you. One fucking ninety. If what the fuck I got sitting around talking about how I'm a loser. How, how I'm doing bad. They love that dumb shit. Man, you niggas got life fucked up, man. I got seven motherfucking cars, nigga. And you got one, nigga. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, nigga, my motherfucking neck heavier than a motherfucking nigga. Bank account stupid. And yours ain't, nigga. 
My fucking <laughs> bank account go Hariga diga ding 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 yeah. nigga and yours fucking don't nigga. So it'll be a lot of dumb shit. So it'll be a lot of dumb shit. And see, that's why the young niggas fuck with us and they don't fuck with a lot of you niggas because y'all be out here putting smut on niggas' names. Yeah, on some goofy shit. Yeah. And, and you know what's crazy? This motherfucker could have been in the YA. He could have been in San Quentin. He didn't do none of that. He stayed 10 toes down on what he believed in. A lot of his counterparts and motherfuckers from his neighborhood, For them real. niggas is dead. For real. Them niggas on T-shirts and on walls and, right. uh, and, and motherfucking uh, L.A. They on T-shirts and walls and walking the motherfucking prison hallways. Bunch of his homies. Bunch of niggas from his neighborhood. Bunch of niggas from the Yajeks. They don't think about this nigga was ever to navigate through all that shit and make it to the top of the world. You know how hard that shit is? Do you know how hard it is to be able to come up in a neighborhood, have the duck niggas that's trying to kill you because you from a certain neighborhood? Not that you even with what's going on. Oh, that nigga from over that side? Oh, let's shoot that nigga. Do you know how hard it is to duck that shit? To make it to the studio? To make it to even go outside of the ghetto? Rather you from LA. Rather you from Oakland. Rather you from Harlem. Rather you from Baton Rouge. Rather you from LA. That shit is hard. So, Artists got to be real mindful when these fucking goofy motherfucking journalists are these. And, and you know what y'all got to be mindful too? The journalists sometimes who writing it. Because sometimes these niggas be geographical. You see what I'm saying? Right. I remember one time I had to, you know, on, 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 on a, a clubhouse, I had to say something to a couple quote unquote hip hop journalists that wasn't giving niggas in Atlanta they props. And I'm like, hold up. Ain't these the niggas selling all the records, keeping the culture alive? And y'all don't mention them on lists? Who the, who, like what type of weird shit is going on? Because sometimes it be people that's disconnect from the culture that's still holding on to a time that don't fucking exist no more. Right. So a lot of times, y'all got to be mindful who writing this dumb shit. These motherfuckers still on back in the daytime. Back in the day is the fuck over. And we need to have more young journalists that understand the culture and the post of the music right now writing about this shit. Right. Well, really old niggas there. that ain't biased. Old niggas who ain't running around here yeah. mad at these niggas because they don't rap like Jay Z, Nas, Fabulous, Jada Kiss, Eric B and Rock M, motherfucking, and the rest of the older niggas. Salute to all the legends, yeah, but salute. it ain't that ever no more. And a lot of you niggas' lives be throwback Thursdays, nigga. You niggas need to snap out of that shit. Yeah. Because one thing Wallow would tell you, you get in any one of my motherfucking cars and you put an old nigga on, we gonna be fighting, nigga. I don't wanna hear that shit. I listen to today, nigga, not yesterday. I listen to them niggas yesterday. I know all the lyrics to them nigga songs. Why the fuck would I keep throwing them on? <laughs> I need to learn what's going on now so. and some new fucking lyrics to these new nigga songs. So guess what? To near it, to mirror, and throw out mm -hmm. to Paris. Uh, yeah, that's going to be next, nigga. Yeah. I'm about to learn the lyrics to that shit. You hear me? Tamara, Tamara, Taisha, TT. Tammy and you and you and you in your, your, your case Ricky Minaj the Kevin the Stallion you know, yeah. it's a fucking nut you know he had all the hoes in jail you hear me you fucking weirdo he's a nut Ricky uh, Rick, Rick, uh, Ricky shit. Minaj made this nigga the most <laughs> money you know I think like that that's crazy man no Ricky shit, Ricky bought all the cards for that nigga you hear me the fuck out of here he used to well, send Ricky the motherfucking nigga sell for lap hey, you got my cards alright send my card deal <laughs> Go down the cell right now. Well, okay, no, that nigga lying, but I'm gonna say this though. I forgot to tell you, cuz my man Mike Mike said Ricky got out of jail. He out here. He out here doing his thing, living his you life. You're about to hunt him now and put him right no, on I'm the street. I'm not gonna do all that. I'm just saying he got out. He's he gonna be arguing with me next week, cuz all this music, I'm gonna leave that money on the table. Uh, fuck Ricky, a bad motherfucker. The fuck out of here, man. Motherfucker out of the joint, man. I'm just telling you, man. Shit happened. The million dollars worth of game is brought to you by Proper Wow. It's a clean, all day energy shot designed to boost your energy, focus, productivity without the jitters or the crash. You don't be jittering or nothing, no crash. You just be amped up doing all type, doing all type of stuff. Proper Wow. I'm talking about no preservative, no artificial sweetness, no horrible chemicals, just a natural tasting energy shot with clean ingredients that work. I'm talking about the ingredients is clean. I'm talking about clean, 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 clean. And I'm telling you, proper wow would just have you all charged up and all in. Listen, early I had a shot. 
I'm amped up. I'm always like just charged up. This right here changed my life. It just got me more like, ah, I'm in the zone. I'm super focused. I actually put, you know, into a good move. It just put me into a good move. And I'm just, I'm just always intense and just ready. What you need to do right now is you need to go to properwow.com slash barstool and try proper wow for 30% off. I'm talking about proper wow for 30% off and you're going to be up. You're going to be like me. You're going to be charged. You're going to be bumped. You're going to be in the zone. Your mind going to be focused and you're going to be on another level. Proper wow. Get yours. The pandemic hit. You become a father. You step yeah. into the fatherhood game. Yeah. You know, how, how do you juggle your music, being a businessman, business owner, traveling the world with fatherhood? How do you do it? You in a relationship? Ty. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of an answer. <laughs> you got a woman, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get nobody in trouble. So. Nah, but, um, nah, you know, I mean, no. Um, with being a father, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked him up. <laughs> With being a father, you know, I feel like I feel like um you know, it's it's always a learning experience. You know what I'm saying? I, I learn from him. Um a lot of the things that he's growing up into, I'm I'm learning. You know, we didn't grow up with iPads. We did like later on, you feel me? But he's growing up with an iPad with him. Like just just different shit that's different. You know, a lot of parents are look down on or don't want their kids to be dealing with so with my son, I just kind of just learned from him. I feel like if I learn from him, I could be a better father because you can't. I just use the analogy like you can't use a Six Flags map at Disneyland. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? If he on this type of time, then you can't use this set of parenting for a kid that just be on this type of time. So I just be learning from him. and I try to spend as much time as I can with him. I, I was on tour for a long time. So when I was coming back home, I came back home for Halloween. You know, I come back home. Well, shit, whenever I got an off day and I ain't in the studio, I try to come back home and just spend that time with him because every time I come back, he be bigger. So, uh, how old is he? He about to be three in April. He probably, you probably, you probably his hero. Yeah, man, he he be watching everything. He be watching all the videos. He be, you feel me? That's that's you know. Uh, I mean, some of the greatest, you know, some of the greatest joy in life is when you have, uh, you know, sons who. Really don't have to go outside their household to, to, to find a role model, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you already your son role model at three years old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pretty sure you performing at awards. He's sitting there on the couch. Yeah. He, yeah. He, you know what I'm saying? That now it's getting to the point where he's gonna be asking real questions. Daddy, show, show, daddy, can I go. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ten thirty, man. Chill out, man. Yeah, Daddy, be yeah, back in it, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. And it's just a beautiful thing, man, because a lot of kids grow up at, with uh, somebody else having to be their role model outside their household. Right? Niggas never looked up to their dad, or dad wasn't even around to be looked up to. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I just want to tell you, man, keep doing a great job, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, no. Nah. He he and that was why we 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 put him on the album. I wanted to I wanted to hear my my son voice last on my album. Like he was the last voice on the album. Um it was just a moment that we had to have cuz I feel like up until this point I ain't really shed no light on my son and that's like something that was like you know that was a big deal for me. You know when the box came out, my son was he was born. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like when Bill we was Doing He's show, doing all bang. that shit, nigga, he was, he was born, you know what I'm saying? So that shit, like, changed my whole life, but a lot of people don't even take that into, you know, them was real-life situations, right. you feel me? That shit took me for a loop, but, you know, that, that shit, yeah. That, and what that, people got to put into perspective is, like, that was your biggest record. The biggest record in the world. And your son is born. So guess who you really don't get a chance to see? Right. Your son. No, nah, I was there though. I was there though. Oh, well, you must have had to take him on the road then. No, 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 I was there. Cuz it was it was like Oh, it was the pandemic. Right, 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 right. right, right. So right, right after yeah. December right, right, it was right, that right. April, boom. You're right. And it was like, you right, know, but who? normally 
If it's not yeah, the it pandemic, wouldn't have, it you wouldn't have been, have been around because right, right. you, you got to show here right. on Wednesday, show here on Thursday, right. show here on Friday, show here on Saturday, yeah, right. two shows on Sunday. Yep. That, and you got to get that money. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But it was the pandemic. So, it was, yeah, you yeah. know, a blessing came out of that. You yeah. was able to really kick it with your son and, right. you know, get a chance to see him grow up. Yeah, that, you, you, <laughs> Because you, a lot of entertainers miss out on that. Basketball out, yeah. players. Everything. Football nah, I was players, doing 111 rappers. in the Cadillac Escalade. That was the max speed I could do. I was sliding down the 405. I had to go get my son deliver him. I remember that shit. That shit was major. crazy. Yeah. That's so. major. Now, now, I noticed something. I seen you when you first was in the game. But then I seen an extreme shift on you just getting, you got real exclusive. And you got, it, it became real professional quick. Just security wise, your exclusiveness, the lack of access of people had to you. What what brought that shift? <clears throat> I feel like you know it stemmed from my personality. You know, people meet me, they kind of understand a little bit of who I am. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of an introvert. You know what I'm saying? I don't really. Like to deal with a lot of personalities too much at once. Yeah. I got too much going on. Sometimes I just shut down. After shows, I got to sit in my, my t- tour bus for like an hour because it just be like I it be too much. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I feel like after just reaching a lot of success, uh, you know, you just hear shit about the industry and all the shit. Yeah. You feel me? So I'm like, you know, I'm going to just do my job, you know, be do do as much as I can. Stay as close to my fans as I can, but I still got my whole son I'm dealing with right now. So that's when I started kind of scaling back and just yeah. dealing with, you know what I'm saying, real family and close friends in the industry like a Dirk or a Gunner. You know what I'm saying? Then with certain dudes I was fucking with or a Doug, 42 Doug, before I kind of blew up like that, he wasn't even, I don't even think he had a son. He might not even been signed to Gotti yet, but he pulled up to my birthday party on some just like, Random shit This was like Early on Yeah I always fuck with him You feel me Like free just dog. certain niggas Yeah free him And I be talking to him too But mm. it's just certain niggas I always keep that c- Close contact with But like You know it just Nigga I don't know I don't think it was more Of a professional move I think it was just My personality Kind of bled into Doing business Like I was just like I'm gonna scale back On a lot of shit And just Do what I have to do You feel me And then you know The yeah. reality of it is You know the more money you get, the more people start acting different. Mm. Right. It's crazy. It's like, it'd be the total opposite. Motherfuckers say, the more money you get, uh, you, you no, start no, 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 acting no, no, different. No, but yo, no, people around you start acting different. <laughs> right. You'll have a motherfucker that <laughs> asked you to borrow money that never asked you to borrow money. You have motherfuckers that's coming up with great ideas for businesses that it was like. They never we, had a business in their life. It's like, bro, we don't have these type of conversations. We talk about the. We talk about the. the for real. The, you know about we, this. We shit. talk about the Rams. Nigga, I got shit, a family bro. member that hit me every. Every nigga, 29th or 30th, every 29th or 30th, every one, every single one. I need you. Every month. I need you, cuz. Yeah, nigga, because that first, because you know why? I'm like, it's two days before the first, nigga. I need you. I need you. <laughs> but I need the you. reality of it is, is it's sad because now a motherfucker become dependent on, no, it's cool, they got me. You feel what I'm saying? It's like it's certain people we we fuck with like that, like right. You know what I'm saying? Certain people that been down and been right. rocking with niggas, and we fuck with them like that. But if I ain't never dealt with you like that, and somehow some way you got my number, and then you got comfortable enough to just ask me every 29th or 30th, nigga, you crazy? Yeah, yeah. See, and, and my whole thing is you got <laughs> block <motherfuckers>. that nigga. <laughs> you got motherfuckers that that was a part of your journey, right? Right, right. nigga might have been your homie. One of your friends, you you know, and then when 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 you come up and you bless them, niggas in your family is mad. He looking out for him. I'm his motherfucking cousin. I'm his. What, no. He was there doing the journey. Yeah, right. He was there doing the ups, the downs, the goods, the bads, the bullshit, the great shit. You, you, you wasn't there. Nope. You just, I'm just supposed to sock it to your pocket like a rocket, bitch, motherfucker, because you my cousin. Right. Because cause, cause See, you one, came one, out of the same set of nuts. One thing we always do, like, I take I take care of a lot of, like, the women. 
like in my family, you know what I'm saying? My grandma, my aunties, my mom, shit like that. But like when it comes to like the men, I got kind of different stipulation with them. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's more so like we got to either be doing something together. If I'm looking out one time or something like that, that's that's cool and it can't be substantial. But it's like, I don't know, because I ain't never like coming up in, in, in my family like, you know, it was always a lot of hard working niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. my grandfather, he was a fireman and he did construction at the same time. Damn. You feel he me? was a real one. So he was like on some was, shit like that. He was a throwback. He was half head. Mexican. <laughs> nah, 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 shit. nah. But that was that. And then Thanks my pops. That's the hardest working fucking job. Right. To the, you feel me? In a, a fireman and a construction but, worker. But but it's funny you say that because back in the day. Shit. Back in the day, this one men was men and men. Men had their own shit. They did their own work. They did right. it. Now we live in a time where it's though the men now supposed to be men. They they try to figure out ways to lean on another nigga to to be able right. to live this lifestyle. And a motherfucker take your money and go live a lifestyle that you not even living. They go fuck the money up. <laughs> the tell you, listen, a motherfucker fuck the money up. Tell you, hey man, I need this. I need that. Go fuck your money up. Turn it up, and then come back next month, man. I need the help again. Me, I don't play. I'm not planning nothing to fuck off. I cut you the fuck off. <laughs> Anybody that asks me for some scratch, I'm cutting you the fuck off <laughs> because really? we don't have no money business. Right. Because I ain't asked nobody for no fucking money when I came out of the penitentiary right. and I was living in Nanny Middle Room. Right. I got out of that day and grind. So if you're a man and you got a business idea, you got that's your idea. Go go to the bank, brother. I don't I don't you're not <laughs> no you're not no business motherfuckers. Motherfuckers is businesses. They they set it up, they start it, and they right. grind. Right. And I just think we live in a time now where it's a bunch of grown ass men that's looking for daddies. You know what I'm saying? They looking for daddies to take care of them. I ain't got time for that. And I think everybody that's successful, they go through these issues with family. Right. Oh, you doing it? They watching your grand worrying about what you doing for yourself, what you doing. That chain you got on, you work for that. Right. You wrote them raps. You was in the fucking studio. Motherfuckers were down the way smoking weed, chilling on the corner. Right. You got motherfuckers right now down the yard just smoking weed, worrying about your money and your business. Mm. Man, that nigga ain't doing nothing for nobody, man. You know how them conversations get so crazy to where as though them conversations can become deadly because a motherfucker could be down the way. That nigga don't do nothing for nobody. All it takes is that one nigga that right. poison the whole, that'll poison some niggas that really got good relationships with you that you can't even fuck with them niggas no more. Right. Cause y'all be sitting around entertaining them conversation right. when this hating ass nigga talking about my money. Man, that nigga ain't doing nothing for nobody, man. We fucked up down here. That nigga ain't supposed to be. And now right. you can't even go around the way no more. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because it's like, it ain't that I ain't got love for you. It ain't even that you scared it, but it's just that I can't even fuck with that energy because right. the energy ain't right in the environment to produce you right. based off of the lack of hustle that niggas have in themselves. And y'all niggas up. run around here on a, a part of the motherfucking bum ass nigga association of America, man. I don't I, <laughs> like. I am. I don't. I don't even go around them type of talks. The motherfucker will tell you, man. A nigga come in this motherfucking studio house, man, and talk about the wrong shit in here, man. They gotta go. I kick a nigga clean out, man. Fuck you, say who got the drugs? <laughs> Oh no, get the fuck out, man. Get out, man. I don't give a fuck about who got no drugs in the hood, man. Get the fuck out, man. Damn, I was just... I, I, no, you, you're in the wrong house. You're talking to the wrong niggas, man. Get out, man. I don't even want them fucking conversations around me, man. You talking about the wrong shit, man. We sit around and we talk about how we trying to chase down 500 million, man. Yeah. We, we don't give a fuck about no nigga that's getting it down in the hood, man. He's going to jail. Or he's going to heaven. He only got two options. He's going to take an escalator ride to heaven. God, is that you? Yes, it is. You were slipping. You either got you for the half a brick you had in the back seat. Or he's going to jail. <laughs> so for your nigga to come around us and talk about certain shit, that shit going to get you a quick motherfucking exit, man. And if you don't, if you don't leave right, we're going to roll on you. We gonna beat you the fuck up, and that's why, and that's why and you pay off so you don't press no charges on Wallow because after we beat you up, you gonna be bitch because you ain't had to kick him in his face. Oh, hey, all right, man, take this money, man. Don't, don't press no charges on Wallow. No, especially if you got it. If you got an eight ball, then you get real crazy when you get the eight balls. Oh my god! You. But the whole twist is the whole twist is like this though. Like you, you ain't got a bunch of niggas with you. You come through your security, your assistants, your PR, your A and R. You know I mean your partner in bird, you come through professional, your cameraman. And I think artists need to take a look at that shit. Cause a lot of artists is filing themselves out of the game, going to the penitentiary, getting shot at. Motherfuckers might even get killed. Because sometimes, and nobody quick to say this, 
It's rules and regulation of the street culture to the point of where it's though, when you come from that, you got to understand as you elevate, there's certain places you can't go. There's certain shit you can't say. There's certain conversations you can't have with niggas no more because you could lose your fucking life about that. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It ain't always about niggas just straight up and down hating. Sometimes people can file their own self out being somewhere you ain't supposed to be. Right. And Doing I think, some shit you ain't supposed to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It ain't it ain't about micromanaging. You know, it's just all yeah. about just moving correct. It's smart. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It's smart, smart how you move. It's about, yeah. it's about understanding your fucking blessings, man. It's about saying, I'm a fucking platinum fucking rapper out here. I don't do that. I'm one of the biggest artists in the world. I don't do that. Yeah, gotta, oh gotta no, gotta we going smart. over here to do this. Gotta be smart. No, 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 no. Who over there? Ronnie, doing that? Ronnie Reed wait, 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 over wait, there? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, little shoot him up over there? No, no. Why, why would I be over there with little shoot But you gotta, you gotta. The thing is, though, I ain't gonna lie. You know, you gotta, <clears throat> you gotta like still. You know what I'm saying? No, you, you gotta still, still show love to certain still show my love and everything. Certain but individuals. It just, it just be all about just moving smart, bro. I, I feel like we come from a place where. You know, it just be so much going on that a nigga have acquired this mindset of like, I see it and I don't want to, I don't want to go down that. You know what I'm saying? Like it be niggas that don't got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah. And they and then be the ones that just something happen and you know what I'm saying? And nobody know. Everybody lifting their hands up like, bro, a nigga know. coming you know to me, man. So it be like I don't. We got to think clear and. And just be like, all right, we on the business. We pulling up on Gillian Wallow. We this what we doing? Are we doing that? We, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, this is business, like though. You feel what I'm mm -hmm. saying? For a nigga to be a, a platinum artist, it's just certain shit that you gotta respect your life. You gotta respect right. how big you are. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. So if I fuck with you, you know what? Pull up on me, bro. Come holler at me. Right. I'm not trying to prove nothing out here by coming to kick it with no niggas in they hood. My nigga, I'm the biggest nigga in the world. I'm one of the top of the biggest niggas in the world. I can't go no fucking where without it being confusion. That's the reality about y'all niggas. I can't go nowhere without it being confusion. I pop up in your neighborhood. I'm on your block, nigga. Within three minutes, that whole fucking neighborhood know I'm out there. Yeah. And they on their the way city. around there. So, for sure. so at the end of the day, when you do certain shit and you put yourself in certain situations and then something bad happened, you know what all the motherfuckers in the world is going to say? Why the fuck was he down there in the first oh, place? Man. See, he knew he shouldn't have been down there in the first place. I don't know. So, before a motherfucker could even get the chance to say that about me, I'm going to say it to my motherfucking self. Why the fuck would I be down there? I, I'm one of the biggest rappers in the world. I, I need security to walk downstairs in the motherfucking hotel. I got to get security to walk downstairs in the motherfucking hotel because if I don't, I might get to the lobby and motherfuckers might lose their mind. Right. Nigga in the lobby might try to play tough and try me. Nigga, for some, all for some, he don't even want nothing from you. He just wants some fame. Look at this nigga around Look, he walking through the Nah, see, I'm going to put him up on game. They got to get them, they got to get them package deals with these four seasons, these different hotels. They going to take you straight through the freight. You know what I'm saying? You go freight, that freight the elevator, door. different, different freights. Yes, sir. Talk to me. See, not, not, that's my point. I'm gonna just exactly. put them up on. You feel me? Put them. That's my point exactly. We don't go through no hotel lobbies or none of that shit. No, let me just <laughs> let me just tell you my point exactly. Me and Wallow got some money. We ain't know nothing about the freight door. <laughs> <laughs> so if the Four Seasons is bringing niggas through the Batmobile way. <laughs> Come through the garage, through the bottom, through the freight doors. You just ain't supposed to be anywhere chilling. That's my point. My nigga, you think I'm coming down there to kick it with y'all niggas? Man, I go in through the four seasons, through the freight door, man. I don't just, I, I ain't just going anywhere. Nigga, you yeah. checked in. All them niggas you with checked in in the lobby. I, nah, you come to me. That's just how I got to be, bro. You so. always got to put protection on yourself. But because the reality of it is this, to every rapper out there, 
you're going to get to a city and you're going to meet some niggas. And there's always going to be a nigga that's going to tell you they run the city. Why? <laughs> Ain't I wish a nigga would play with you. A nigga play, play with you, nigga. We going to send him to heaven so fast, nigga. God ain't even going to know he was up there. Damn, when you get here, are they going to tell you all this good shit I'm talking about? But the reality of that shit is the first nigga on the draw lay the law. So if a nigga pull a gun out on them niggas first, guess what's going to happen? You niggas going to get shot. <laughs> so just understand. You're going to meet a bunch of niggas. They're going to they tell you some stories about how they say niggas' lives. Oh, fake how a nigga story, pulled yeah. guns out on him. He took the gun from a nigga, pistol whipped the nigga, told that nigga he wish you would. You're going to hear some of the greatest shit on earth. But the reality of this shit is, when it go down, <laughs> the first nigga on the draw lay the law. I ain't going to front. So. And, and it was so crazy about that Gil. Gil is really telling his life. He was talking that King of Philly shit. Young boy shot him. He got grazed. That nigga screamed like a pig in the slaughterhouse. <laughs> that nigga was, ah! Nigga, you got grazed. He was talking his tough shit. A nigga grazed your hand, your little pinky. You got grazed on the pinky hand. It, you know, the eight ball war, if you were screaming like a pig in the slaughterhouse. So I didn't understand. Like, he, he's telling truth shit, though. It's like, true. I'm the King of Philly. Like, hey, hey, nigga, hey, graze your hand. Hey, you scream hey, like life was over. First of all, he was locked up. Like, you got hit in your head, though. You screamed, though. You got grazed. Did you all, get grazed? Get you got grazed. Get grazed. Fuck is you, you got talking grazed. About? I got fucking shot multiple fucking times. Fuck you, me. Yeah, shot grazed. You. Did you, your shirt, Fuck shot you to your shirt caught on fire. No, my shit ain't catch on fire. My shit actually is not My shit. Actually, my shit would have went off of fire. Because I got the fuck about it in the Septicons oh, retreat. Shit. Fuckers, you talk about. I know how to exit a good, you know. You would have been dead out that motherfucker because you never got away from nothing. They wrote a book. You they get wrote away a, skills. They had a movie it's about me. Up, you hear me. They had a movie about me. <laughs> the he negotiator. Got locked up at I'm gonna I'm get out. I'm a he negotiator. Got locked up at what they got to do? We I ain't never get shot. He got locked up at <laughs> shit, nigga. Because you, my negotiating game is legendary. When oh, the, when, the, when the pistol come out, you turn into the ultimate listen, bitch. Ho, ho. Not the ultimate warrior. <laughs> the ultimate bitch. Listen, man. Nah. Hear me? All these young boys. Nah. All these young boys. Nigga, pull a gun out on him right now. He gonna name. Listen, oh. young, I know you're hot, man. <laughs> Tamika, man, he's Tamika, your aunt, nephew, all his Kiki, old dumb your mom. shit. Oh, no, that ain't my mom name. That's what we call in the high school. Your mom used to go to Gratz. Yeah. You like my nephew. I remember you was young. Yeah. I got to talk him down yeah. to the car. Oh, I mean, tell him, you know, young boy, get the joint. Ho, oh, ho, younger, put that joint up the cop right there. Hurry up. He going. <laughs> <laughs> I know the game, nigga. You got to be on point. Ho, oh, younger, put that joint up the cop right there. I'm out of here, man. I ain't got time Wait, for that dumb shit you want. That's something. why you got shot. You got grazed, nigga. You scream, nigga. Let me tell you something. I ain't going through that shit, man. Let me tell you something. Fuck that. You try that with these young boys out here now. You hear me? I mean, you try that with these young boys right now. He pull that drain out on you. Hold on, young cop. Don't do that. Hold on, hold on. The cops, younger, don't do that. And. Young gonna look, he ain't gonna see the cops. He gonna look, you gonna be running. <laughs> All right. And no, I'm gonna tell you something. These niggas got handguns that shoot like machine guns. <laughs> so he, yeah, yeah. he gonna be, oh, you playing on here? No. <laughs> no, listen, listen. <laughs> Hit you all in your fucking back. I mean, yeah, running like this. <laughs> you hit you all in your fucking back. <laughs> Listen, and you gonna run out on you say, oh, you was playing. You he gonna know. You gonna run right out on you. You was playing. A classic. Bah, bah, bah. A and they gonna tell you it's just like no, that classic. when he does your stupid a, a, a ass. A classic joint you can use you on a young cat. <laughs> what? On these young cats, one of one of the classic joints. He laughing too hard too about that fucking eight ball. No, you know about the eight ball. You know you like them eight balls. The whole you thing is this. Crazy, hey, tell me talk about the eight ball. You laughing a little too hard, nigga. You over here. Listen, you also can say another thing. And you and you and you got a good ten minutes. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, oh, young, we ain't gotta go through this whole oh, young. You drop you just dropped your perk. It's over. They're going to look for that. I'm out of here. I'm out. By the time they look up, they can use the switch. I'm going to block away. You run different when, it, when the heat is out. When that hammer's out, you run different. Don't worry about it. The fuck is the matter with you? You should have ran. Tell you. Kodak that shit if you want. Your run game was bullshit. You dropped your perky, but it's cool. It's fake. <laughs> Man. I still hate it because I'm a gremlin. No, I thought he said, I thought he said, I knew her butt was fake and I still ate it because I was a gremlin. I didn't know no, he said nah. that. was your remix. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. You talking about all the masses. He out here. I was like, damn. Her butt he was fake. I still ate it because I was a gremlin. <laughs> no, no he, I was he saying this song. He just told I'm going to tell you too. And Waddle like him. Let me tell That's you something. That's what I was saying he in the like song. He like him fresh out the club, not the tub. <laughs> no, he, he like he like it had a little twang to it. You hear me? He like it had a little. Let me tell you something. 
He like a bitch a little musty. Yeah, me. He don't want you fresh. He don't want you though so fresh and clean. He no. He want a bitch he fresh out man. the club. You hear me? Been popping up pussy all night drinking motherfucking Casamigos. I got a question. So the million dollars worth of game is brought to you by Hello Fresh. The holidays are just around the corner, and Hello Fresh make this busy time of the year easier than ever with chef crab recipes and pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your doors. So you can spend less time meal planning and prepping. You ain't got to worry about all this time on prepping and planning. Save money on dining with HelloFresh and put it towards holiday shopping. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less than takeout. Like 25% less with over 35, I'm talking about 35 weekly recipes. There's something to please everyone. You can also easily customize your recipes by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading to choose protein, or even adding proteins into a veggie meal. I'm talking about HelloFresh. They're not playing. Quality is HelloFresh priority. Ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days. So you know, you know, without a doubt, you know they're fresh, without a doubt. Busy days and late night calls for more flexibility. That's why HelloFresh has plans that work with your schedule. You can change your preference. I don't, it don't matter, whatever. You change your preferences. Delivery date and address in just a few clicks. I'm talking about a few clicks. We use it. We love it. HelloFresh is great. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Game70 and use code Game70 for 70% off plus free shipping. That's 70% off when you use code Game70 at HelloFresh.com slash Game70. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business yes. Spotlight. Listen, when we give you the yes. game, I'm talking about the game. The day we got oh, my man. man. Listen, my man, I seen his brother come up, man. I remember, man. He was selling candy bars at uh, Broad and Susquehanna, man, in the Philadelphia area. He back wasn't doing day. nothing. He was doing, I'm telling you, no, back in the day, this was like 36 months ago. He was JBM, <laughs> just barely making it. And if you want to be like my man, Nehemiah, listen, you could go to the next level. But before we even get started, so you get into this game, text CLASS. Text CLASS to 741 on CLASS to 741 And he's going to give you the game on how to set up the event space and take it to another level. Neil. Hold yes, on. Sir. First of all, oh. I just want to say this. But before and get we that get credit started, too. before we get started, <clears throat> if you want to do event space, you need help finding, funding, and automating it. And drive a Lamborghini doing it. <sighs> this is your guy. I seen this motherfucker go from this many event spaces. Selling candy bars to, to this many event spaces. More event spacing than this nigga can handle. So if that's the game you trying to get into and you trying to run your bag up, I'm talking about. Yeah, that's how I be when I be counting my money. Y'all better get with them. And the that's class, it. hold up. Let, let me explain something to you. This is a free class. We just giving out a free class. You're not paying for nothing. You're getting a free class. I'm fucking You're coming believable. into a free class of how to go from zero selling candy bars in Philadelphia to. <laughs> Have a multiple, in Atlanta. multiple, multiple event space, how to get the credit funding, how to do everything to get your event spaces, how to get them automated, and how to get them just going. And, and what do you say? You find them? What you do? I show people three things. One, how to find it, how to fund it, and how to automate the process. Mm. And for your people today, again, text class to 74121. Not only am I going to throw y'all that class, I'm going to also throw y'all a book that also help y'all. So, so you getting sure the class in the book for the strength. I'm talking yeah, about just for just the love. Just on the house. Yeah. Just on the love. Now, 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 how did you get in the game? Tell them because a lot of people don't understand how you get in this game and they just think in the event space. What do that mean? Yeah. What do so I need? One of the, you know, you, you've, been a, you've been to both of my event spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things, the most expensive thing about having an event is the venue. Mm -hmm. And the people who are getting paid the most money is the owners of them, and they never there. When the last time you've been to venues, and I never seen, I never seen you there. Last time we was at your event space, we went. You remember when we went to Nadia? One of them. We went to Nadia, the fundraiser, the yeah. region, and shooting the basketball and all that. That was shit. his event space. Yeah, <coughs> right off Ridge Avenue. Yeah. Right there on when the corner. When we was in that joint, fuck all the way in the ATL. He was in Atlanta. Got spaces down here. I didn't even know that he, he was, was his nowhere around. Space. I know yeah. he was nowhere. I've been there for two different. Things. I was there for something else. He was nowhere around. Yeah. Two different times, and then he was. Then it was one out. I think out west. West Philly, thirty eighth and Lancaster. Yeah, I was there. To. I mean, yeah. another time when you wasn't there. Yeah. So it was like multiple times. Yeah. So you just making money by being at home, laying in the bed. Yeah. You know, I've been in Atlanta for two years. I've been in my spaces about <laughs> five times in the last two years, following this method that we do. And what's the method? First of all, before you get to the method, how do they even get in the game? If you say, if I'm, you know, yeah. 
Like I ain't got nothing. How do I get into the event well, the, space? The here? first thing is one of the things we do. Everything's about leverage. Whether you leverage in partnerships, whether you leverage in credit. So the first thing is you got to find it. You're looking for a commercial space anywhere from one thousand to three thousand square feet. One of the sites you could look on is Crexy.com. When they get on the class, mm. I'm gonna break down all the sites everywhere mm. you look. Mm. Another thing you could do right now because they don't know how to market. A lot of event spaces are closing down because of lack of marketing. Right. So we now go acquire businesses that's already ready to go and you need nothing. You just walk in the door and you're able to turn that thing on. So, one, you're able to find these from people already shutting down. You're also able to find these. They're not necessarily event spaces, but they might have been another could have been a dance studio, mm -hmm. could have been a daycare. We changed the use permit and now we're able to use that and leverage it for What's event a space. use permit. So essentially, when you get spaces, you can't just go in here and just have events. You got to make sure it's zoned properly. You got to make sure it got the proper Pretty much guidance. Like, right. hey, the city is saying this is approved to have events. This is approved to do a daycare. So we break down how you, pretty much how you do all of that. And then let me give you all a game. A lot of times people are like, yo, I don't even got no money to get started. I even show you a partnership project. Let me give you an example. So many churches right now are not making money. They got these huge buildings, right? And inside of these buildings, you got a basement. Banquet hall already ready to go. Yeah, banquet we, hall. We go approach the churches and say, yo, we're going to get this thing booked, but we get 50% of the revenue. So I got people right now making anywhere from 1000 to $5,000 a month, don't even own the building. All they did was approach the building, get it listed on these booking sites, and they managed the booking for them. So you could go literally go do that with churches, anybody that got a building that yeah. don't know how to use it properly. Got a space. That's And that's, a, that's most of people. Yeah, yeah, most people, yeah. Most people got buildings and don't know what the fuck to do with it. Now, if I ain't got uh, so so, that's the least I could do. But what do I need? What is the paperwork that I need to be able to have? And once again, this class is going to be extremely free. He's giving you a book and he's giving you a class about how to get in an event space. What you need to do is text class to seven four one two one seven four one two one. Text class. He's going to put you in a free class and give you an ebook. Now. What is the paperwork do I need? So me going to a church or me going to anybody that got yeah. a space, do I need some type of credentials? Well, you just need a contract. Like when you just say you come to my spot and you like, yo, I want to run this deal. You just need a contract. You going to give me the contract and your stuff and your information? No, I meaning I'm not doing no deals with you, man. I don't mess no, with I'm you not like saying that. giving like, no, me I'm a playing. contract. I'm talking about you going to educate me how to create a contract. Oh, I'm yeah, trying I'll to be show you. I'm going to literally show you how to pretty much be a broker, a middleman, how to do this with all type of businesses. But ideally, we start with churches because that's the easy way. And the only reason why I'm saying this is because you're going to have somebody on here like, bro, I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to... Um I don't have no money. I don't have no credit. I don't have none of this stuff. Or right, just get started this way till you build up a little bit of money. Then we go get you your own space. And now there's no limits on what you could do. And how do you get them their own space? So we show them how to get their own space by finding it. And then we go ahead and show them how to literally negotiate the lease. And right now in the times we're living in, you're able to negotiate. So on my on my Lancaster Avenue, on my uh, Ridge Avenue spot, yeah. when I went to go get that spot, and I had it four years now, the rent was $3,000. I negotiated that down to nineteen hundred dollars. So you got to think about it. An extra stack of money. I've been there the last four years. Twelve, twenty-four, thirty, forty-eight grand. I would have paid extra. So the first thing is you do is you approach these uh, these landlords and you literally let them know what you're looking to do and how much would the lease be. A second thing, one of the hacks that I teach people to do, you hire a realtor. You hire a commercial realtor. Let them know you're looking for a space. Hire two at one time. Let them go out and find your space for you. The landlord pays the realtor on their if they, if it end up getting booked. So now you got a free employee going to go look for your space. And the easiest thing you could do is just start driving around. You want to look for strip malls. You want to look for commercial corridors. And you want to look for warehouses where you easily could go in there and get get it popping. Yeah, that's, that's just strip malls be jumping too. Yeah, strip malls popping. And, and here's the thing: a lot of times people might like, saturated. If you know how to market, it don't matter. If you bring in influencers, if you run in TikTok ads, if you run in Instagram ads, if you bring like when you come in, hey, good, wow, can y'all do a video? Like leveraging those type of things that most people simply won't do. Now let me ask you a question, mm -hmm. right? Now, when you have these, but is, is it a certain person, certain area you supposed to look for to get them? Yeah. yeah. So it's outside. I know you said strip malls and all that, but there's certain areas that, that generate the most revenue. Yeah. So ideally you want to get high traffic areas. But for us, honestly, it's nothing wrong with the hood. Both of mine, I tell people to find areas on the cuffs, right on the cutting line. So yeah, mine is at 38th and Lancaster. Mm -hmm. You go make a left. You yeah, go down to 40th. Yeah, you, you, you make a Drexel. right, you at Drexel, literally yeah. in two minutes. Right. You make a left, you on 40th and Lancaster, they they slinging, they slinging drugs. So bottom line is you make a right, you at Drexel University. Yeah. 
You make a left, you might be in heaven, nigga. <laughs> Facts. And the same thing for my one in Rich. You go left, you in North Philly, you go right, you in, you in, you in Manioc. So yeah. you want to find one that's on a cutting area. And the minimum, here's the event space map. The very minimum you want to rent your location for is between 500 to 1,000 and do five events in a weekend. So if you do one on Friday, right? You do two on Saturday and you do two on Sunday. And the number one hacking strategy that I teach, or not number one, but one of them, is you get a church to pay you on Sundays. So in my first location, I had a church for two years. One church gave me $1,000 and another church gave me $1,500. I made $2,500 a month. Guess what happens? When the church is renting my spot on Sunday morning, they're in there from 9 a.m. to 12. What you do on Sunday morning if you don't go to church? You at the crib sleep. So you're rent. I show you how to rent your spot during the dead hours where you weren't going to make any money anyway. Guess what? The dead hours is now covering your overhead. Now you essentially acquire this place for free. And now every other event you have after that, after like a few bookings, is all free profit. All right, now, what's the majority of the people that have rent Event space, is it baby showers? Is it yep. uh, baby showers, uh, book signings, seminars, uh, repasses? Repasses are popping because you could partner with funeral homes and they send you a bunch of bookings, mm -hmm. um, uh, weddings, uh, seminars. But my favorite is our number one booked event is a baby shower because oh, they ain't gonna okay. stop having these babies. All right, mm -hmm. now, now, Thank 50 God. percent of our events are baby showers. Now, I thought he was gonna say some other shit. now, now, how do you funerals because you niggas ain't gonna never stop dying? No, no. <laughs> that's the unfortunately. Truth. That's not going to the truth. I have people going to die, but but you know where if, if they were here being a book for baby showers, do you do you take care of the food and all that stuff? Yeah. Like, so how, how I run my thing because I told you my process how to find it, fund it, and automate it. I haven't been at my spots for two years, and the reason why I haven't been there for two years because all I hire is an event manager. And I hire a virtual assistant. They run the entire business for me. I don't get into we setting up your food for you. We not a caterer. We not an event planner. I let you hire them people and and as hands off. But someone else, you can go ahead and partner with an event planner and caterer and say, yo, you only can use my preferred caterer. You only can use my preferred event planner. And every time they get booked, I get a piece of the action. So for me. The way we run it, because we're just running it fast and I'm running it from far, is I don't get in the nitty gritty of let's provide your catering. Let's provide. We give you a list of people you could use. Go holler at them and just just run me my money for using it for the six hour time period. Mm -hmm. That ain't even bad. But listen, what y'all need to do for this free class, I'm mm -hmm. talking about he's going to be giving up a free class. And I'm ready to have him get into everything that you're going to be getting free. He's going to give you a free ebook. What you need to do is text class to 74121. Text class to 74121. That's class to 74121. He's going to give you free. What is going to be in this class? What's yeah. going to be on there when yeah. you get them So on? one of the things I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to show you how to find. I'm going to show you all the websites that you need to go to. I'm going to show you what areas you want to look for. I'm going to literally break down strategies to acquire them from people who already got them and don't know what to do with it. I'm going to show you how to partner with people who have event space so you don't even got to put any money out of your pocket. You could just leverage uh, your relationships and the things that I teach you. Second thing, I'm going to show you how to fund it. I'm going to show you how to set everything up before you even got a space. So once you get a space, you're already getting bookings in there. In addition to that, I'm going to show you how to go get some credit. I'm going to show you how to get anywhere from 50 to a quarter million dollars in credit real quick. You could go to Key Bank right now, and that's a, a spot that's giving out money. You could go to Truist. That's a spot that's giving out money. You could go to Floor and Decor. They're giving you 12 months to 18 months. I see months. Truist everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. Floor and Decor giving you 12 months to 18 months, 0% interest. So now you go ahead and get the card. You only got to pay it back for you, you could if you pay it back within 12 months, zero percent interest. So you're leveraging everybody else's money. So I'm going to show you all these different ways to go get money. Then I'm going to show you how to automate it. I'm going to show you how to literally freaking hire your virtual assistant. I'm going to show you how to hire a booking manager. And then I'm going to show you how to set it up on all the different websites so you could just get bookings and partner with all the different event planners. Uh, funeral homes, churches. So you could get that thing on and popping. So, so you're just going to put niggas on their feet. Yeah, yeah, if they willing to work, bro. You know the ground. Like if they ain't willing to work, this ain't gonna work. But if you willing to put some work in, I'm gonna literally show you everything step by step, how to find it, how to fund it, how to automate it. And then listen, it's free. It ain't gonna cost you nothing. Like if you leave here, some of y'all gonna leave here and get a space in 30 days. Some gonna leave here and get it in 90 days. But it ain't gonna work unless they put that work in. And all you know, how long is the class? Class, I'm gonna give them because cause the MWG, I'm gonna give them a, a good two hours. I'm gonna break everything down for mm, them. Let me just say this. Yeah, he said something real. Real key to life, nigga. It ain't gonna work if you don't work. That's a fact. I'm just I, I, like I ain't shooting no. I, I keep it above. I like that shit. Yeah. It ain't gonna work if you don't work, nigga. Yeah. 
And then this is what I want to do a uh, while for your people because you like, bro, I know you the man behind all these people making million dollars in the day and all yeah, of this stuff. Everybody who registered, bro, I'm going to give them a bonus class to teach them the digital game as well. The so they can learn how to go make ebook money. So you just all giving out all this motherfucking game on me and I was worth a game yeah, like y'all, my guys, man. On the strength and listen before for y'all Send to that get motherfucking this number, man. For y'all to get this, I need y'all to text class to seven four one two one class to seven four one two one class to seven four one two one. I don't care what you got going on. I don't care how much money you think. I don't care what your closet look like. I don't care what you think. Listen, you can have that, and then you could be a flip side. You ain't got to have nothing. But this class is free. One of the things that we don't take advantage of is information and Facts. our time. And we got to start protecting our time. So listen, all you're going to do is take, he's going to give you a few hours. He's going to give you the game. And this show is you how free to get 99. Money, man. It's free 99. Neo is going to give you the event space game for free 99. Right now, all you had to do is text 741 class to 74121. You're going to text class to 74121. I know you always talk about that. I'm going to show them how to get that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna Ooh, okay. show them how to get the gold. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna show them all of that. And you're not playing. We're gonna do a cash giveaway at the end of the class too. Just he's doing whole, whole. He's doing a cash giveaway too. Yeah. All mm -hmm. you gotta do now, now. Now let me let me take that beat back. I don't care what you're doing. This is free. If you want to make money in the event space, what you need to do right now, you need to text class to 74121. Neo is going to give you the whole game on how to get your event space with no zero dollars. Also, he's going to give you the game on how to market, and he's going to give you an ebook, and he's going to do a cash giveaway at that. And going to give you the game on for? how to get money from loans from banks. And I'm like, what the fuck are we talking about here? Like, what, what is he talking about? I and all you got to do right. is one thing is text. Class, the 74121, you're going to text that, you're going to get in this class, and you're going to sock it to your pocket like a rocket with the information he's going to give you. Absolutely. Stop playing games. We got to stop playing games. This is what it's about. Once again, text class, the 74121. Now, Neo, before we get up out of here, right? Yes, sir. What you got to tell the people, man, to motivate them and let them know, man? Yeah, you know? I mean, if you y'all know my story, same thing. Dad been in jail since I was two, kicked out of high school, kicked out of college, been fired from fired. ten jobs, y'all. He was a bum ass worker though. He, when he say fired from ten jobs, he was in that bullshit. That was part of his eating journey chicken. to get his life. He was together. eating chicken and all that shit, eating them Big uh, Macs, fucking the fries up at no, Wendy's yep, and all that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I saw that to say, y'all, that your current situation, not your final destination, y'all. Like mm -hmm. literally now, I employ thirty different people, multiple businesses. Right, my mom is retired. My wife is retired and we're living our best life. But more importantly, people, than that, I'm helping other people make money. Forget about me. Forget about me living my life. I want to help other people do the same. So, again, y'all y'all dudes inspire me with y'all doing. Thank and I'm just happy that I could just come on here, give game and just keep helping the people elevate and get to that next level. Once again, text class to 74121. Class to 74121. He's going to give you the whole game on how to set up a, um, I'm talking about everything you need to set up, dealing with the event space. He's going to give you the game, how to get finance and how to do it with no money. He's going to give you an ebook, and he also going to give you a, another class on how to do business marketing, internet marketing, and also he's going to give away some cash money. So what is we talking about? Let's this go. was another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight, and it's just like that. Right? I got a question. Right? What's the key to being in a long term relationship like Gilly? First of all, let me just tell you something. Right. You, you got to check her at least once a year f for no reason at all. That's just. You check Tootie more than that. Yeah, but Tootie Stu deserves to get checked. Fuck you talking about. Yeah, I mean, she be throwing her shots at me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like like this morning, she woke up with an attitude. So I asked. I got the video on my phone. Matter of fact, I might shoot a video on here. I asked her. So, Fuck, I ain't go long enough or something last night. Fuck you waking up with an attitude for. We went to, first of all, we went to bed at the sex. So if you woke up with an attitude, <laughs> fuck it. You ain't work. You ain't you fuck, get a little old, I nigga. I put the butt fucking work in last night. You know what I mean? So you get a little she old. She woke up with an attitude. Nah, that ain't reason why I got it. Well, why the fuck you ain't happy then? Yeah. You know what I mean? So sometimes, you know, you got to. Well, plus, women, they love to get checked. Trust me. Look yeah. at her. She over there like this. She love a good check. And look, nigga, see, check your ass down, girl. Stop fucking playing with me. See, no, that's different. That's 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 not checking. That's you know, that's some aggressive jail shit that you don't, you know. <laughs> Shut up, you know, nigga. Nigga told him that. <laughs> and he got mad at sale, too. You can get your ass down, nigga. This nigga was just penitentiary shit, man. You know the West Coast nigga be. No, because let me just say That's something. why that shit's so funny. He lying no, to me. because listen, uh, the reality of it is this, right? I would never tell nothing on my cousin that ain't the truth. You be lying on me. No, huh? I would never tell nothing that Where ain't Where you be the getting truth. this shit from, though? You be lying on oh, me. Man, you know your brother told me. Like one night, right? Now, ask him, is this the truth? 
One night, the nigga cell caught on fire. Valentine's Day night. He like <laughs> 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 no, listen, Valentine's Day night, the nigga cell catch on fire. We be having jail incense in cell. <laughs> so it, the incense, because it's like a piece of paper. It, had, it was near a towel. And it caught on fire. It wasn't the Valentine's Day night. <laughs> Valentine's Day you night. Lying, man. Him and his cell in there rubbling this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you lying on me, cuz. They had candles on the joint, on the four joints on the bed. They get the rumbling candles jump all on the <laughs> bed. Hey, they go set. You lying, fire. nigga. You nigga, lying they had a real man. live motherfucking. I ain't gonna say what y'all had. In that Come on, tell me, tell me. Tell see, me you man. ain't giving me the secret. You ain't trying What's to give the me the secret. No, honestly, though, right? Honestly, though, right, you got to find something. That they say opposites attract, you know what I mean? And me and my woman is really total opposites, you know what I mean? My woman is laid back. You know, she ain't really with none of the extra shit. She just, and you know, I'm outgoing. I don't give a fuck. So, so you know, for me, I really truly believe the opposites do attract. I also believe that. You know, you go through some rough patches, but it's about if you truly know that this person is for you, it's about getting through the rough shit, getting through the arguments, getting through the bickering and beefing, getting through whatever y'all got to get through. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, a lot of times the grass don't be green on the other side of the fence. Right. You know, the only thing I can't, only thing I ain't putting up with is you to toss another hot dog in your motherfucking, in the motherfucking pan. You feel me? Throw another dick in your mouth, I'm gone. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you throw an extra hot dog in the pan, what the right. fuck is that doing right. in there? You know what I mean? Fuck it, oh, I got the only hot dogs at the cookout. Fuck, it's wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, any longer than ain't none of that shit, you know, I can get past it. We can get past arguments. We can get past disagreements, you know. We can get past all that shit. But f- so for me, you know, it's, it's not really that serious. I know that this is who I want to be with. I know that you truly got my back. You know, my woman went to jail with me. You feel yeah, you told on that time. You actually snitched. Fuck out of here, you nut. How, was, yeah. how did you get out before, though? You I told. get out before. You <laughs> told. She was in there for two weeks after you got out. You made a statement. <laughs> it's proof. It's on the internet. He's but a fucking ahead. liar. You hear me? So, for me, you know, communication is key. You know, and, um, you know, really, really knowing who your partner is. You know, and a lot of times, you know, doing different shit. Trying some shit, you know, you know what make your partner happy. Then, you know, once a week, take her out, make a certain day for her, make her feel special. So you know, today, dog, what you doing, nigga? Pull up, nigga. We getting fucked up today. My, today, <laughs> my woman day, dog. I will at you, niggas, tomorrow. Whole day dedicated to it. Whatever you want to do, right. feel what I'm saying? It's just the small things. You know what I mean? That. You know, even when you go through some shit, she gonna stick beside you because she know you really love her and really got her best interests at heart. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, right. that's kind of the secret. You know what I mean? But uh, a lot of motherfuckers can't. You know, they can't go through. They can't ever get to the secret because a lot of motherfuckers mm-hmm. don't pick their woman based off of. Uh, you know, they they pick their woman based off of a lot of other things. Right. You know how she look. How she's presented, they ain't, they ain't talking about how she is as a person. See, that that's first and foremost. You know, I take a motherfucking, I take a okay, I take a okay motherfucking seven and a half with morals before I take a motherfucking uh, uh, ultra whore that's a dime. Oh, you look good, but bitch, you like a motherfucking 2023 fucking Bentley with cloth seats, bitch. Your inside's fucked up. Right. You feel me? You look good on the outside, but bitch, your insides, I might fall in that pussy. And you don't want to get a semen demon. Yeah, you, know, I mean, you don't want to run into a woman that's a semen demon. Right. Right. You know? semen. semen demon. Yeah, yeah. Be, like, it'd be dudes inside. There'd be different yeah. semen inside of her fighting. Yeah, because she done fucked, like, yeah. six niggas raw, so she got yeah. all these semen in her. Huh? She got all spirits. these different energies yeah. in her. You slide up in there, you're done. She got yeah. Raheem, he a broke nigga. She got Jamal, he getting money. So Raheem in there, he mad at Jamal. What you what your rich ass doing in here? Fuck is your broke ass doing in here? Like, you know, like she got she two gotta, niggas that's in jail. Yeah. Still spirit still stuck in her. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a lot of shit. So the yeah. so the pussy part of the pussy in jail. Yeah, part of the pussy institution alive. You know, bitch got yeah, a lot of t- 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, and she got she got semen demons. They all in her. They, they fighting, fighting. They arguing. You that's know, why her energy be bad. That's why right. her moves be bad. That's why one minute she cool, next minute she mad. She bitch up and down. She cause the, the talk, <laughs> bitch hot and cold. Ooh, ah, <laughs> the bitch semen, everywhere. The semen demons. Ooh, ah, bitch yeah. is all over because she got all them fucking semen demons in her, man. Fucking with her, man. You get one woman. She got one semen demon in it. It's just yours. So you like, yeah, look. Also, you know, if she got some fucked up energy, you gave it to her. Damn, yeah. I fucking gave her that fucked up energy. Yeah. Yeah. Some dumb shit. Knew I shouldn't eat that McDonald's and that Burger King back to back <laughs> yesterday. Uh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. You feel what I'm saying? Throw like, off. And then for me, you know, I like women that value their vagina. You know, you don't value your vagina. You know, if you, you think your vagina's a dick, you could just throw it around and you just cool. Why can't I? I mean, niggas do it. Why I can't do it? Oh, man. Yeah, no. Nah, that's Fuck out. you say, bitch? Yeah, that's hot. That's like, out. why you just can't run around and dust niggas off, bitch? Uh, because when you dust niggas off, you're a whore. When, it, when we dust bitches off, we're a player. And more bitches want to fuck you because of it. Think about that. Dude. No, for sure. Think about that. You get all the bitches, guess what happens? More bitches want you. They ain't like, he get all the bitches, we don't want him. Knife. A knife on it? Let me, yeah, that nigga, no, nigga got a knife and a motherfucker. Look at him, he's in prison shit. You see, he noticed the knife. Get away, I'll man. Whack you the fuck up. Nigga chase knife. you around the yard. <laughs> 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 that motherfucker. Yeah, flashbacks, look so. at him. Yeah, flashbacks, <laughs> look at him. It's heavy oh, though. You no, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're not stabbing me back here. No, let me Whack that nigga. That I, thought I went right into jail mode. Oh, this motherfucker heavy too. Shut up, nigga. Oh, don't do it, please. Nigga, oh, let, no, 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 let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Don't do it, please. But this really yeah. happened though. This don't really happened because a nigga called home from up to the joint <laughs> and he told me. Lowe was 17. He got up there. As soon as he turned 18, he got certified. He got to the jail. Over here walking his cell, he was whistling. He's. <laughs> You better stand said, with this shit, man. He said, what's up, young fella? <laughs> Wallow was like, hey, what's up, OG? OG <laughs> said. Wallow, ready. No, listen, OG <laughs> told him. First, time, OG nigga. told him, now listen, player. <laughs> we can do this the easy way or we could do this the hard way. Wallow was like, what you talking about? He was like, I'm talking about tons of buns. Wallow was like, wait, hey, tons of buns? Fuck is you talking about? OG said, let's see for two rules. You lying. Don't Blood leave. on my knife and shit on my dick, nigga. Hurry up and choose. Fuck out you lying. Get my knife, nigga. You lying. You lying on me, man. Why was it? You lying on me. I'm going to take this shit. I'm going to take this shit. lying. You fucking lying on me, man. That's what he told me. That's, That's a sharp ass knife, nigga man. Say, but that sure. motherfucker really did. You can take it in all the clubs. You can't take it in the airport. Oh, you can't? Nah. You can't take it in yeah, the airport. That's a real joke. That's a man. real fucking whack. So you yeah. got to put that under the plane. Yeah, I keep the fork though. You ever eat with that shit? Like you be in the restaurant? Fruit. I can't. I can't eat no real food. That shit hard as shit. Should have taken. Like this joint, I could have gutted you out, man. Like a pig in a slaughterhouse. That's just out. Look, look. That ain't. That like, no, I'm just saying, like certain shit ain't supposed to come out of nigga mouth that did 20 years. <laughs> I'm just saying it's cool. You know what I mean, it's certain cousin, shit you ain't supposed to, to tell him nothing. I could have gutted you out. <laughs> so like they got a slaughter. They like that, man. Take a, I think you're taking it a little wrong. Fuck man. type of uh, mm. extra zesty shit you coming on today, man. Yeah, but that's cool. But listen, at the end of the day, it's like this. So. Look, he thought the machine cut off. Nigga, I'm like, nervous. Here. He know he, he in charge of that. The machine would have slapped the dog shit out of him in here. Yes, that would have been the first time you see me. I'd have said, yo, go get the sugar. I'd have dipped my hand in sugar, slapped Jolly Ranchers oh, out that God. nigga we, mouth. We, we just would have flew up Miami and did it all over again. Oh, no, we was cool. shit. I'd have slapped Jolly Ranchers out that nigga <laughs> mouth. <man. laughs> now, listen, man, we ready to get out of here, man. We appreciate having you doing your thing. You got the new album out. Anything you want to tell the people? Man, shit. We still, we still doing it. You know what I'm saying? We still going. Appreciate everybody that support me, you know, from the beginning. Uh, shit. Appreciate y'all for having me. That's right. Go get that motherfucking album yeah, yeah. right now. Download, stream, buy, do TikTok, everything. gram it, Twitter. <laughs> y'all know what to do. Get that motherfucker Come on. to number one. You yeah, hear me? Yeah. Number one. First of all, that motherfucking record you got with dirt. I'm just saying. I know that motherfucker by tomorrow. 
Come on, appreciate you. Word. word for word, I know that motherfucker by tomorrow. Twin. You hear me? Shout out to the guy. Come big, on, big, big. Roddy Rich Big. Appreciate you Yeah I mean I'm gonna keep it all the way real and I'm just, Before we get out of here Nigga got on six motherfucking I'm bracelets The diamonds in the motherfuckers Is super clear But I'm gonna keep it all the way real This is one of the biggest And, and best chains I've seen On some young niggas man mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie That motherfucker yeah, right there so That motherfucker right there Another level Who made that? Elliot Oh yeah yeah Shout out to Elliot He ain't bullshit on that you 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 want that, but that wire that was for that motherfucker. I can't. Did, did you pay in cash? Nah, nah. He, he we did it over time. Over we time, over baby. Time, over time. How long it took you to make that shit? Uh, two two months, three months. How heavy is that shit? Six pounds. Nah, nah, it ain't six pounds. <clears throat> the chain of kilo. I think this is like uh, that shit is a plate. Probably five hundred grams. And it got a diamond in the grams, back, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's his shit though. I, I was telling him don't put that shit on my shit, but he he you know yeah. made by Elliot. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Elliot, man. And hey, listen, go get that album. Come on, and it's just like that, right?